of the half hours. <laughs> um, yeah, purpose of the script meeting. Yeah. Basically, they tell you when all you're going wrong. Cut this, yeah. cut that, go straight into it. Yeah, yeah. Cheaper, 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 cheaper. Cheaper, cheaper, cheaper. <laughs> Lucy, right, episode seven. Beautiful specimen of a woman. <laughs> oh, she's getting red lip. <laughs> no, you're not a proper writer. <laughs> I'm not a proper writer, really, it's true. I type like this. Yeah. Miss Lauren Down, we're about to go Bristol. Show out to you. I'm nervous. Oh my god. Waiting for fucking ever, man. Ed, like, the costume designer just came up to me and said he read it. Like, I'm like, oh. It's out now. Yeah. Critics and shit, and everyone's gonna be talking about it and shit. We've got three weeks left, and it's judgment. It's judgment day, man. I've asked you to live. I've asked you to move in with me. You don't seem to be giving me an answer. <laughs> I think we better have sex. <laughs> <laughs> we'll regroup. <laughs> yes, regroup. Yeah. So um, Nurse Kelly knows. Cassie knows. Cassie knows. Michelle, Michelle knows. The next thing that should happen. The next thing that should happen. I believe. Is that, um, is that Jal should tell her dad. Sit down. I said sit. I didn't grow up with my dad. And that, that I found especially hard as well was writing for a father. Because I didn't have that. Brian would say something, this is what a father would say, and I, would, and I didn't get it. You either fuck up your life or you don't. You've got an audition, music college, everything you've been working for, everything I've been paying for. When you do it, it takes a lot out of you, man. You go deep, man, for the emotional stuff. Well, me anyway, when I write it, and you have to go in the character, in the zone. You can't just write on the surface and, and not be in there with, with the character. So that stuff is, it was really hard, really, really hard. She won't speak to us, she's gone, gone. Right, look. You did something. You fucked up so bad. One day we're gonna find out what you did. I don't know what I did. When you do it and then they turn around and say, nah, but we don't want it, it's like, oh. <laughs> You know, but this is the way it is, so not really. One of the nice things about brothers and sisters, I think, is that they often just accept all kinds of things that other people make a terrible fuss about. Later on, when it's all gone to shit, you know, you can have the brothers kind of coming together, all stilted and halting, and all kind of not quite able to express themselves, but there to tell her that they love her and they don't understand why everyone's making such a fuss. Yo, Uncle Lennon in the house. Hey, what are you boiling for? You got a young blood nephew passing true? I enjoyed writing the brothers. I remember when I got the idea for um, the brothers, what they would do. I'm not a businessman. I'm, I'm a businessman. Business and then I just, it just popped in my head because I, I felt a lot of people, a lot of boys around the area were like, yeah, I'm going to be a businessman. I'm going to, you know, blood. going to have my T-shirt range, get my same blood. And, and I thought, let me just put that in because it's not, it's not really seen. I thought, let me just poke a bit of fun out of that. We got teas for the Crips, the Bloods, and the Game and them. When they told me, I was like, yeah, easy, man. Poor fat. Where's the read through? Nah, that's ages away. Such an entrance, because I've got a camera behind me, and I look like a knob or something. Because I was part of the cast as well, they know me, and they got, everyone was like, quite hyped to read it. I had a copy of it, and I gave it to Larissa. I haven't told anyone this. I gave it to Larissa to read, and I didn't want to give it to anyone else. I was really scared. So I have that. They've obviously read it now because I went in there for a bit and Mike Billy goes, Hey, I'm a businessman! In his weird sense of humour. I just don't know what to expect. I've never done it before, innit? So I don't know what the hell to expect, man. I haven't got a clue. I thought we'd single out Dan um, to uh, <laughs> maximum <laughs> embarrassment, really, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so it's Chris Clough, producer. And you're right off. What are you? Hey. A character that I found really hard to write was Chris. I found it quite difficult to write because I personally, he's, he's one of my favourites, and the other writers write him so well. Oh look, my pad this way. My music audition. Come on, don't go. What? I need you. It's not like I've got in yet. Oh, you'll get in. 
And then you'll move in with some fucking music student called Terry from East Anglia that blows a fucking trombone. And then you'll sit up through the night discussing your blowing techniques, and then you'll blow him. And I fucking love you. I never liked trombones. He's got a unique sense of humour, it's just like something else, it's just out there. So you couldn't really hit with a normal joke, because it wouldn't be right for Chris, because Chris wouldn't, he's not a mainstream person. So you'd have to go a bit out there to think about jokes. And it was hard to get out, I'd find myself on Wikipedia looking for brazen bulls. And Wikipedia, that's crazy shit. I have one word for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> word for me is shit. No. I really only have one word. <laughs> Merde is that word. <laughs> At the reefer, I was, I was in a bit of a state. I couldn't really think straight. I couldn't really. I was just so like, I don't know if it was shock. I don't know what it was. But sometimes I just like shut down a bit. And I went into the green room and just, I just laid down. And everyone said it was really good. Everyone said it was really good. But when people say that to me, I just don't listen to them. I try not to let it um, sink in. But with the cast, they're really like an honest bunch of people. So if they thought it was a bit rubbish, they wouldn't really talk to me for a while. So. <laughs> but they still talk to me, so it's cool. <laughs> and also Larissa as well. I wanted to give her a good, a good episode. I wanted to give her a good, a good chance to... Because I think last series, I don't think she was given a, a chance to show what she can do. So I wanted to give Larissa a lot to do and give her her opportunity to shine, baby. He gave me... He was novel, gave me challenges. I'm really good friends with Daniel. I think he really captured Zhao and he sat and really thought about the emotions she'd been through and looked and did his research from series one and took on board a lot of um, emotions she had and where her, she was mentally and brought that over to series two. And he really thought about each stage that she was going through, especially with the pro pregnancy thing. No, it was good. Because there's so many ways you can, so many different ways you could take being pregnant. And, um, so I think he considered that, and he brought the best idea that he could to it. He did very well. Very proud of you, Daniel. When I was sitting there, I was in the scene, I was like, ha! This woman, like, the college director was like, hi. You're saying lines that I wrote. <laughs> I was in my boxes, writing that line in front of my chair, drinking ginger beer at 2 a.m., and you're saying it. But then when you see the footage, it's proper like, you know, it's proper like, this is like overwhelming shit. Like. Where the fuck were you? Jananda, there's a reason for everything. Whatever you do now about this baby. But it's quite powerful to see. It, it is, plays man. really well. It, is, it does, isn't it? When I watched it, I was like, it is really well acted. But uh, it was weird seeing that. It was, but I feel, I feel like I wasn't putting myself on, on blast like in front of everybody because it wasn't really me. And is what Jao would do in that position and when in that situation, what would happen. <laughs> How have I done this, man? <laughs> <laughs> I've learned so much, man. I've learned so much. You've been conditioned to think the way Chris Clough thinks or you know, Brian, Chloe, Holly. And all them people you're just conditioned to think like that and like so when you look back at, at, at one, the first draft, you're like, Whoa, what, what is this? What is what is this? Cut this out. If I got offered to do the script now, with what I know, I would attack it completely different the way I did. Because you just learn so much and right I've learned a massive, massive amount from Dan Skins. Let's be a wicked. Hold tight, Jack Clough and production. <laughs> I'm joking, big up skins. Hold tight, Brian Elsley, big up Aaron Elsley. Big up Holly Hughes, uh, big up Chloe Moss, big up Chris Clough, big up my mum, and my sister, my family. Big up London. <laughs> big up Uganda. Blast! <laughs> yeah, thank you for watching the documentary.